movies, please. Old movies never die, they simply play away on DVD. It's 11 years since a young and impressionable Michele Santangelo first switched on the film Wall Street in his Johannesburg home. It changed his life. I think it had everything that a young guy wants to see. It had uh, the money, the power, the action, all the excitement all the time. And it's uh, really epitomized what young guys want to do in the future. So it really gripped me at that point in time. It inspired him to make a career dealing in the markets through the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. Like many youngsters around the world, he was hooked by this tale of insider trading, share manipulation, wide lapels and flash cars. The original Wall Street was released in 1987 by Oliver Stone. Now a lot of business people remember the Wall Street film in the 1980s, that morality tale of power and money and financial chicanery, but probably not a lot of people know that one of the actors in the film was from Johannesburg, from Orange Grove, in fact. Now, he's come here to visit the land of his birth, and uh, we've come along to meet him. Rocco Ancarola is back in Johannesburg to open a restaurant in his hometown, 30 years after he left to follow his dream. Most kids say, I want to be a fireman, I want to be a truck driver, I want to be a policeman. My dream was to be an actor. I said, I want to go to New York, and I want to be an actor. My mom was like, what? What does that mean? What's an actor? He ended up in the restaurant business. Here, he met up with the producer of Wall Street, who offered him this fleeting part of a maitre d' in the famous 21 restaurant in New York. It didn't start well. So I ran outside and decided, instead of taking the train, the subways, that I would take a taxi. And of course, it's rush hour in New York City at 8 a.m. in the morning. It was the stupidest thing I could ever have done because I got stuck in traffic and arrived on set about an hour and a half late and Michael Douglas and Charlie Sheen had been waiting around and Oliver Stone were waiting on the set for me and uh, they weren't happy. We, we did another take um, as we delivered the lines and he calls me over and says, Lewis, take care of my friend. He sticks his hand in his pocket to pull out the $20 that he was gonna tip me and um, didn't have the money in his pocket and he started looking for it and I looked in my pocket and I found that I had still kept it from the last take because we'd done it so many times, I'd forgotten to give it back to him. And Oliver made a big joke about it, and Oliver's like, what happened? He says, Douglas, you don't have another $20 in your pocket? It's the only $20 you carry, a big shot Wall Street guy like you? And the whole set laughed because there's a lot of extras around. And for about 20 minutes, we couldn't film because people were just cracking up and having, uh, you know, laughing at that, at that moment. Now the sequel is in cinemas. It's called Wall Street 2, Money Never Sleeps. It follows the infamous corporate raider, Gordon Gecko from his prison release. It raises new questions of finance and morality in the era of the credit crunch and the bank bailout. And one mobile phone. But sometimes it's the only place to stay sane. Paul Teron, an analyst in Johannesburg, is another Wall Street fan. Well, you know, the greed is good line comes up when he's doing that presentation in the crowd to the shareholders of a particular company. But my all-time favorite still is the one where uh, somebody asks him whether he's going to be taking a break, and he says, no, 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 lunch is for wimps. <laughs> it's nearly a quarter of a century since those words were uttered on film. Has the world of finance learned anything since the heady days of the 1980s? You know, it's obvious that markets have become more regulated and more managed in recent years. And one reads stories about how things were completely wild at the turn of the century in books like Jesse Livermore's, uh, you know, stories of a stock trader. In the 1986 period, it's clear that there's still a lot of pretty wild stuff going on. You know, illegal information, inside information, uh, ganging up and uh, buying and selling stocks, open and blatant market manipulation. But I think since then a lot has changed. I mean, as a result of specifically those um, prosecutions which are reflected in that movie, I think out and out insider trading is much less uh, prevalent now. Uh, I think certain corporate actions and what happens around those still can be a bit fishy. And we know that you know equity markets have been volatile and all sorts of problems have occurred. But I think the movie was quite a critical juncture and reflected a critical juncture in, in US market regulation. Yeah, I think there still is a bit of that happening around. Um, there's, always, there's always someone who's had a chat over a, over a bride, has mentioned something along the lines and someone's got their ears open. There's always a, a little bit of information flow that isn't always above board. But I, I don't think they've had huge impacts as like in, in the Wall Street movie, but I certainly think there are um, some deals that are 
in no from other people. So in the world of finance in 2010, greed may still be good, but like money, regulation never sleeps.